Previously on Sailing Catalpa, we explore parts of Arman Land in the Northern Territory and get ourselves in a bit of a pickle coming through the hole in the wall in the Wessel Islands. Good job, mate. I reckon we've got about eight knots of current at the entrance of that, and um, I, I don't know because it's your sound is showing us as a full high tide, but um, I'm guessing it's the last of the run out with that much force. So I don't know what to do. We're going to have to try and just see what these tides are doing. Stress for the day. Who says sailing's relaxing? Starting towards the side there as soon as the current got against the keel and it just accelerated. Yeah, that was scary. It's like in waves now. Dirty, dirty sea. Look at that. That is it's literally like a washing machine now. Uh, Way to hide, I think, and reassess the situation and yeah, settle the nerves. So we went back away from the entrance to reassess the situation. So we've just probably had the most scariest event happen on Catalpa where we just really got thrown around by an eight knot current. gap in the wall here in the Wessel Islands is what we're trying to get through. So you usually do it on the an hour turn on the top. So on the top of the tide, uh, the ebbing tide runs west. So we got there about half an hour after the turn of the tide. They so gap which shows it now falling of 2.2 metre tide dropping out. So we worked off this, top of the tide we were there half an hour after and we should have just went through nicely, but it wasn't the case. If we go up to Hopeful Bay, this is only guessing at the moment, it's still rising. So I'm thinking, so if we look at this here, it's still only halfway up. So about one o'clock should be our entrance time over here. So we've got a, a high tide ebbing out to the west. But when we were over there, we had a flood tide coming to the east. So, so far wrong with that and the Navionics. So, hopefully Hopeful Bay is the correct. Uh, one and a half nautical miles away from the entrance. We're not gonna anchor, we've decided not to. Um, we're just gonna kinda float around for a bit and wait. We've worked out, well, the tide up at the next island is two hours or three hours difference so we're going to wait closer to that tide and then and try again it can't be worse than what we just tried to go through so we figure we should be okay um but yeah we're just going to hang here for a little bit 
hopefully he's going to settle his nerves before he goes back in there. I think he's uh, a little rattled after going through the passage. I haven't had the water coming against us that quick before in Catawba in such a narrow entrance which was the scary part. It was like that eight knots of water as soon as I veered away from it pushed against the keel and it just shot us off to the side like a bullet. Um, yeah, very scary. So glad we got up at four o'clock this morning to get here on time. It's just so, it's just so like, I don't know, it's an eye opener to, uh, we, I thought we double checked the tides. I usually run off what's on the, on the head unit, which is Navionics, but then I've also got the iPad, which I run off, so. It was all perfect timing to this tide where we are here, but it seems to be I was just I, I really don't know. I'm still startled a little bit by the tide. Yeah, we've got no internet, so we can't we can't Google uh, what the tide was. But we did look at the tides anyway last night. We had internet last night. I know it does vary a little bit up here with tides. Obviously, like in the Torres Straits. You can be high tide here and go around the headland around the corner and it can be low tide. It's so strange. Yeah, but, but it uh, wasn't a little bit out. It was like, that was that was on the, that was a run out. I reckon uh, we were, I reckon the difference in the tide from the next bay up seems to make sense. So, yeah. We'll try again. We just lost it half the day. You, we'll be a little bit more cautious entering such a narrow uh, inlet like that. Oh, and thank God we didn't do it at night. Oh, I'd say we would have lost Catalpa. Yeah, it would have been a disaster. That was uh, very hard to control in that. Such a, we've got a full length keel, so you turn eight knots straight onto the keel like that, and it just throws you around like anything. But Actually, it's not so much the spinning around, it's the darting effect to the, to the sides in the entrance there, which was the scary part. Yeah. But we have a pretty good captain and um, he held himself together like a yes. superhero and... Felt the ticker go a little bit funny but yeah. <laughs> no, you did well. Not many people could have got out of that situation without panicking. So good news! Second time lucky. Took us a while but we, uh, we got there. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. We learn a lot from this experience and hope to never put ourselves in a scenario quite like this one. We have a great captain and are so thankful that the engine had no issues once we were going through the crack. I think next time we'll go round. So it's our first night on our passage to Darwin. We're just watching the sun go down. Had a really nice sail today once we got going. We've got 15 knots of wind behind us, so we're directly downwind. Hopefully it's a, um, a pleasant sail tonight. So, we've still got a fair way to go. Probably over, or well, close to 400 nautical miles. And the weather looks good. So hopefully tonight will be an easy sail. So we're just getting ready for our night sail. Bella's made our bed up here for us. Oh, I put my flannel on, love. Why didn't you wait till I got my flannel on? On our passage to Darwin, we have about 360 nautical miles to go. The wind's dropping back a little bit as the evening comes on. We've got about 10 knots behind us, not even, about 8 knots. We're just cruising along at about 6 knots, so I don't know, probably, probably a day or a couple, two and a half days, I suppose, depending on what wind we get tomorrow. Uh, should be a nice night, not too bad. Sea's behind us. We had a good night sail, not much wind, but very comfortable and always happy to see the sun rise in the morning after a long night of taking turns on watch. Oh, I think it's a shark.
I think if I can get the someone can help me here see if you can get the little gas cars <laughs> go, go, go. Get that stick. Oh no. Your guard. Turn over. Can you get it? He'll be fine. Just didn't want to lose my finger. Gotta keep your fingers away from those choppy little teeth. Yeah. Gotta grab that. Grab that rail real quick. Yeah. Oh, that was your hand off. I'm not fishing. Shark has got to pull him out. Pull him out for a while. Oh. Well, I didn't gaff him and we did do our best to try and save him. Oh. So, we're, this is day two of our passage to Darwin. We got about 200 nautical, 280 nautical miles to go. and. We just got a shark, hard to get off, but we let him go. Hopefully he survived. And yeah. And we're just watching the sun go down. It's our second night on this passage to Darwin. And we don't have much wind. We've had it all from the back of us um, until now. It's just gone beam on, so we're just hoping it picks up a little bit. So it's day three on our passage to Darwin and the captain looks awfully miserable. What's going on, captain? <laughs> we have no wind, everybody. I repeat, no wind. But we do have the sail up now, so there's a little bit of wind and we're moving a little bit quicker. We've had just the engine running and we're all going a little coco loco. And it's hot as hell, baby! It's hot as hell! <laughs> and he decides to be miserable sitting there in the hot. Bella and I prefer to do this.
We think this is our last night. Are we yeah. going to arrive tomorrow? Uh -uh. We're going to arrive three days from now. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So we're, our ETA is tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. It's our last night on our passage to Darwin. It's my birthday in two days. So flat, guys. It's gonna be really good sleep tonight. So it's day four of our passage. We're about five nautical miles out of Darwin, and I am anxious, awaiting to get to bed tonight. I haven't had a good sleep the last couple of nights, so yeah. had a lot of uh, tide against us, wind against us. We had a massive storm come through. We arrived into Darwin about 9pm that night and we're very happy to drop the anchor and have a good night's sleep. We anchored in Fanny Bay. So we've arrived in Darwin and we've anchored up where we're going to stay. Um, we're going to better go to shore. Uh, I think we're going to go to the Indonesian Embassy if we've got time because it's about one o'clock so we've got to go find it. Go get some food and uh, it's a special little girl's birthday tomorrow so we gotta go shopping and that's about all we're pretty excited to go to land and um, have something to eat that's about it so join us next time as we celebrate Bella's birthday and catch up with family at our last stop in Australia before we head to Indonesia oh, it all comes all thanks to you all Thanks to y'all